let's, I think what you're talking about is a new wave of employer-employee relationship yeah. and the new relationship employees have to organizations in the future. Let's stick with two organizations because they're global. Airbnb and Uber. Okay? Yeah. Airbnb is disrupting hotels all over the world. And Uber is disrupting transformation systems all over the world. Yes. Now, these have less to do with country cultures, they less have to do with organization structures, but these industries, the transportation and the hotel industries, they could have come up with these innovations and they didn't. And it could be because of their hierarchical, old world, command and control, top-down structures. And I believe Latin America, and increasingly I'm seeing it, they're going to feel the increasing global pressure. Just take Uber here in Colombia. Yeah. Uber's all over this conference. They're everywhere. Yeah, we work for Uber. Yeah, so it's a very different experience. Yes. And so I think you're going to see that relationship because of the technology changing is going to force organizations to say we have to innovate and it starts with becoming a preferred place where people want to work if you want to innovate you need the best people to have the best people you got to be the best place for the best people to spend time yeah. and because people know through social media if you're a bad leader or a good leader they have choice and when working in Silicon Valley or a leader <laughs> that's right that's yeah. right Either way, either way. I think I think the best leaders are going to want to be, even the CEOs are going to be wanting to work in an organization where people can move quickly and they can adapt because the markets are changing so fast. But I do think Latin America has a huge opportunity. I am seeing it in Mexico. I'm definitely seeing it in Spain. I'm spending a fair amount of time in Spain working with schools there, working with some businesses there. Lots of innovation. What I'm not seeing enough, I think, is the real full government support for this. I think the government's still taking a wait and see. I think it's more like protectionism versus openness. Yes. And I think the countries like Colombia that are leading in this area have an opportunity. Yes, listen, we are this overwhelmed world of technology and information, I still believe we are a visual culture. I think it's, it, pe we people are underappreciating it. I'm working with a company right now that's in Spain that's working with a technology to visualize text. So I, I don't, I hope the future, and this is where I hope video is going to help go, is going to eliminate the need for us to type. That is going to be a video world and people are going to be more and more comfortable with it. Absolutely, because I think the pipes and the infrastructure are laid now for video to be able to be transported in packages so that you can get a clear picture. Like I still do video conferences sometimes and it's so grainy, it's so slow, it takes forever to start. But we're getting better and better, I think, around the quality. Because that's the limiting factor. I think video is better than just voice. Because you get tone, you get text, you get context in a video. You get the facial expression, you get the body language. You don't get that with a voice. You just get inflection and tone, but I don't get to see your, you feel you and connect with you. And so I think it's a very, very powerful tool for connecting with consumers, connecting with employees, connect, connecting in families, you yeah. know, so much more.